Captain Coder here, and in this guide, we take our first look at the Add Force method in Unity to allow our players to jump. This is the fifth video in our 2D platformer project, and if you missed the previous video, you can find a link to it in the description below or hop right in using the provided Unity package. And if you would like to be notified when the next video is out, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Before we hop in, I want to remind you that you can ask questions, share projects, and join Captain Coder's Academy on Discord or catch me live at captaincoder.live where I create fun projects like this, chat with the crew, and drink way too much bean water. With that, let's hop in. At this point, we have a simple player movement controller that uses Unity's 2D physics system to move our player back and forth in the scene. But what type of platformer would we be if our player couldn't jump between all of the platforms? So we are gonna add in a script that'll allow us to jump between the platforms. One way to do this would be to add it directly into our player movement controller. However, this can cause our code to bloat, get really, really complex, really, really fast. If we put everything into a single file, it becomes hard to understand and use. One way to combat this is to use solid programming principles. The S in solid is the single responsibility principle, which says that every class should have exactly one responsibility. In this case, the player movement controller controls how the player moves back and forth. And we're gonna create another script called the player jump controller, which is responsible for controlling the jump velocity of our player. Let's go ahead and create a new script now. I'm gonna right click in my script folder, select create C sharp script. I'm gonna call this player jump controller. This script is gonna check when the player presses space and then apply a force to cause the player to go up into the air. Before we hop in, I wanna make sure I remember to add this script to my player. So I select my player, I select add component. I'm gonna add the player jump component here. This also allows us to validate that we named it properly. If you need to rename it, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and open up our jump controller here in our editor. And in my update method, I wanna check at the frame that the user presses the space, we want to do something. I can do this by using an if statement. If input.get key down, this method checks the frame that this key was pressed. I'm gonna use space here, key code dot space. And inside, we want to perform an action. But before we do that, let's verify that this works. I'm gonna debug.log pressed space. We wanna make sure that it only happens once when we press space. We don't want the player to hold the space button and have a bunch of jumps happen. We want it to jump exactly once when we press space. So now that my game is running, I can press space here and I'll notice down in the bottom, I get press space. This is where our debug log goes. If we wanna see more of that log, we can come over to the console tab here and each time i press space you'll notice it comes through once if i hold space i don't have it happening a bunch it happens exactly once if you're not seeing a bunch here you may want to verify that you're not in collapse mode here collapse actually prevents duplicate messages from cluttering up your console this can be super useful and instead shows the number of times that it has been pressed over here so as i press this that number will increase i press space it increases awesome Next, we want to actually add a force to our rigid body. We can do this by accessing the rigid body. I'm going to create a variable. It's a rigid body 2D, rigid body. I'm going to assign it to get component rigid body 2D, like so. And then I want to use the add force method, rigid body dot add force. This will allow me to apply a force in the upward direction. I'm going to do a vector to dot up. And I want to use the force mode. There's a second parameter here. Force mode 2D dot impulse. When we set it to an impulse force, it adds that force immediately. If we set it to a force, 
it actually will apply it over and over. It's used to do acceleration. In our case, we want the jump to happen immediately. We don't want to apply an acceleration over time. Let's hop back in now to Unity. And when we run, in addition to seeing press space, you should see your square, your player move just a little bit here. You might be hard to see if I zoom in a lot, we can see it a little bit more. This is because we're applying a very small amount of force to our player. So I have a challenge for you. Update your program here. So that way we first cache the rigid body into a member variable in our awake method then create a second variable to track the amount of force you would like to apply when jumping up and allow you to edit it in the inspector. Give it a shot and I'll see you on the other end. If all has gone well, you now have a jump controller that allows you to launch your player into the air and come back down to the ground when they press space. Additionally, when you select your player and look in the inspector, you have a jump force or comparable variable that you can adjust how quickly the player jumps into the air. And this is done in your code. If you're not there yet, go ahead and pause this video. I'm about to talk you through my solution. Here we are in my code. I've added two private member variables, jump force, which happens to be a float, and I've added the serialized field attribute, which allows us to access that in the inspector. The second variable is a rigid body 2D, and this allows us to cache our rigid body component in our awake method. And finally, in our update, I updated my code to remove my debug.log. I don't need that anymore. And to use the cast rigid body variable to add the force, meanwhile, multiplying the jump force by vector.up. It is okay if your code is not identical to mine. However, for the remaining videos, it is important that the structure remain the same and you take note as to the mapping from your variable name to my variable name. So when I discuss my variable name, you know which one of yours I am referring to. You may have noticed that your player loftily jumps into the air and then floats lightly back down. This is related to the way Unity does default gravity in a 2D game. At its core, it is using gravity as 9.8 units per second squared. This would be mimicking Earth's gravity, but if we wanna jump up nice and high with our player, we need to exert a lot more force than a human could to jump up into the air. That said, we want to adjust Unity's gravity. There's several ways we could do this for our game. This one is gonna be modifying the project's gravity directly. If we open up the project settings, in Windows it's edit project settings, in Mac I believe it's the same from the top menu, you'll get to this project setting window and you're going to find Physics 2D on the left side. Additionally, you can search for Physics 2D and find it in the left side, but we want to make sure we're on the Physics 2D tab here. And you'll notice we can adjust the gravity in this section. Again, by default, it's negative 9.8. This is Earth's gravity. If we adjust this to be a larger number, you will find that you get a little bit snappier in the jump. I personally like around negative 32. And this will be for my default gravity. Now when I press jump, I get these nice stiff jumps. When I jump up, it comes up and it feels good when I come back down. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my player's jump force here to 15 and see if I like that. Yeah, that feels really good to me. This is the jump I like. It's gonna differ from platformer to platformer, but go ahead and play around with these controls and find the ones that work for you. One last note though, is that when you stop play mode, these values will reset to what they were prior to play mode. Make sure you find the values you like, take a note of them, and then reset them outside of play mode. Go ahead, give it a shot, 
and I'll see you on the other end. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this guide useful. But have you spotted the bugs in our jump and movement controls? If not, play around in play mode a little bit to see if you can discover them. Then leave a comment in the description below or at Captain Coders Academy on Discord. If you'd like to be notified when the next video is out so you can see my approach to solving them, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you, you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye bye So you can see my approach to solving them. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you, you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye bye